tonight. Our special coverage on Israel's war on Palestine as questions about Israel's failed security and dual role of U.S. government remain unanswered. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Zahra Sayed. Today is the 19th day since Israel declared war on Hamas. A recent Israeli airstrike has targeted a house in Khan Yunus, resulting in the loss of 26 lives. Many more are feared to be trapped beneath the rubble. The Israeli military says it has targeted Hamas positions with tanks in an overnight ground operation. According to Palestinian Minister of Housing, approximately 200,000 housing units, either partially or completely, have been destroyed since the onset of the war. Human rights organizations have raised concerns about the mass detention of over 1,400 individuals in the occupied West Bank. Approximately 4,000 Gaza laborers who were working in Israel when the conflict erupted also remain in Israeli custody. On the international front, President Biden is facing backlash for his remarks questioning the authenticity of the Gaza death toll. He has also called deaths of Palestinians in Gaza as price of waging war. His comments are receiving a backlash from the international community. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has denounced the Israeli attacks on Gaza as, quote, barbaric. Nine Arab nations have issued a joint statement condemning the targeting of civilians and the violations of international humanitarian law in the Gaza Strip. The UN Refugee Agency for Palestinians is requesting fuel to sustain crucial humanitarian operations. Al Jazeera Media says it condemns Israel's indiscriminate airstrikes, which resulted in the loss of family members of its Gaza bureau chief. According to a statement on Telegram, Hamas's military wing, the Qassam Brigade, has claimed that Israeli strikes have resulted in the deaths of approximately 50 hostages. In another development, a Hamas delegation, led by a senior member Abu Marzouk, has arrived in Russia. An emergency United Nations General Assembly meeting has been called by Jordan. The Palestinian ambassador to the United Nations, Riyad Mansour, is appealing for peace in his address. Israel's ambassador, on the other hand, is justifying Israel's indiscriminate bombing, calling it a result of the Hamas attack. The conflict's toll continues to mount. At the time of writing, at least 7,028 Palestinians have been killed. Out of the deceased, 2,913 are children. 1,709 women have been targeted, and 397 killed are elderly individuals. More than 1,400 people have been killed in Israel since October 7th. In a surprise revelation, an Israeli Defense Force veteran who previously served on the Gaza border is challenging the narrative of the Hamas attack on Israel. The veteran has alleged that the assault was what he calls an inside job. He alleges the attack has been carried out with knowledge and support of the Israeli government. According to the veteran, the sequence of events leading up to the attack points to possible complicity within the Israeli government. The veteran raises questions about how an attack of such magnitude could have evaded the surveillance of the Israeli security agency. He says the Israeli military is known for its rapid response. However, he says in this case where there has been a delay in action which allowed the attackers to operate for several hours. The veteran also questions the need for American aid to combat an ill-equipped Hamas. The veteran's statements have raised significant doubts about the Israeli version of events. And in related news, an Israeli think tank believes now is the best time to evacuate the entire Gaza Strip. In a paper, the Misgav Institute for National Security and Zionist Strategy advocates ethnic cleansing of Gaza. It also supports payment to Egypt to relocate the Palestinian population near Cairo. The Misgav Institute is headed by Israel's former national security chief. The paper says several conditions must be met for this plan to be carried out. The proposal draws comparisons to previous cases in which political leaders found opportunities in civilian suffering. The pattern of leaders seeing potential benefits in the midst of tragedy is not unique. Notably, former U.S. President George Bush spoke of the opportunity that arose from the September 11th attacks. The U.S. is facing scrutiny for its firm resistance to calls for a ceasefire in Gaza as the conflict continues to escalate. Although President Joe Biden is cautioning against the unexpanded conflict, he has expressed unwavering support 
for Israel. Human rights activists and critics are questioning the dual standards. Trita Parsi, a foreign policy analyst, says U.S.'s goals are conflicting. So far, the U.S. has opposed the ceasefire in Gaza, despite global calls to end Israel's indiscriminate bombing of civilians. The U.S. vetoed a ceasefire resolution in the United Nations. U.S. officials have even ruled out discussing a potential ceasefire. They say such a conversation can potentially benefit Hamas. Instead, Washington is preparing a $14 billion aid package for Israel. The package includes significant military assistance. Pentagon advisors are assisting Israel in planning a potential ground invasion of Gaza. The White House denies any intention of deploying U.S. troops on the ground. Despite this, it is increasing its military presence in the region. Adam Shapiro, director at Democracy for the Arab World Now, a rights group, says the recent decisions by the Biden administration lack a well-defined objective. Biden's call for eliminating Hamas is being met with skepticism. Experts say that the military efforts to eradicate the group are unlikely to succeed. The future of Gaza after a potential Israeli ground invasion also remains uncertain. President Biden has expressed opposition to re-establishing a permanent Israeli presence in Gaza. Experts say neither the U.S. nor Iran seem interested in a broader military confrontation. However, they caution that mil- miscalculations of the Gaza conflict could lead to a broader conflict. Palestinian resistance groups claim Israel is preparing a surprise attack on the Gaza Strip involving the use of nerve gas and chemical weapons. London-based online news website Middle East Eye reports that this operation will be led by U.S. Delta Force commandos. The source suggests that this information originated from a leak in the U.S., but it remains unverified. The plan is to surprise the targets and use international banned gases like nerve gas and chemical weapons. Israeli and U.S. soldiers will allegedly pump large quantities of nerve gas into the tunnels, which could paralyze individuals for up to 12 hours. During this time, the tunnels would be infiltrated, hostages rescued, and the enemy soldiers neutralized. The leaked information suggests that Israel's delay in its ground invasion is part of a misinformation strategy to maintain the elements of surprise. During President Biden's recent visit to Israel, he shared a photograph showing three Delta Force commandos reportedly advising Israel on hostage rescue. The post was later deleted. Delta Force is known for its expertise in hostage rescue, counterterrorism, and high-value target missions. They have previously been involved in operations against ISIS. The source says operational details of the attack have allegedly been agreed upon. Officials from Turkey and Pakistan are saying that the struggle against occupation cannot be labeled as terrorism. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says that Hamas The Palestinian resistance group should not be categorized as a terrorist organization. He is calling Hamas a liberation group, fighting for the protection of Palestinian territories. President Erdogan's remarks come as he cancelled his planned trip to Israel. He says the high number of casualties, including children in Israel's attacks on Gaza, is very concerning. There is a notable shift in Erdogan's earlier remarks, which appear to be more calculated. Erdogan says a guarantorship system should be developed to resolve the Palestinian conflict. He says Turkey is ready to act as one of the guarantors on behalf of the Palestinian side. Meanwhile, during a session at the United Nations Security Council, Pakistan's diplomat Munir Akram said that the struggle against occupation, self-determination and national liberation are legitimate causes. Akram strongly condemned Israel's military actions in Gaza. He is calling for an immediate and unconditional ceasefire. The Pakistani ambassador expressed regret over the United Nations Security Council's inability to call for a ceasefire. A disturbing trend of Israeli TikTok users are ridiculing the plight of Palestinians who are being indiscriminately bombed by Israeli forces. The immoral posts are sparking widespread outrage. One such user has faced intense backlash after a video surfaced where she is mocking the dire living conditions faced by Palestinians in Gaza, including the lack of clean water and electricity. The video captures the Israeli woman flaunting the luxuries in her home while addressing the audience in a condescending tone. The post has drawn a strong reaction, with some condemning the Israeli TikToker as, quote, worse than Nazis. 
Videos in which parents and their children partake in the mockery are also being shared on X. In some videos, the Israeli TikTokers can be seen dehumanizing Palestinians by comparing them to animals. Users are denouncing the trend as disgusting. Some users are suggesting to report the content. Since Israel's war on Palestine, there has been a surge in Israeli influencers and content creators joining in the derogatory portray portrayal of Palestinians. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not for profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.